fractured communities, divided by those who would manipulate us for their own purposes. His spirit of faithfulness calls us to live as one people. Please remain standing as you're able for the gathering song, New Century Hymnal number 70, verses 1, 2, and 4.
God to dwell within us. But our actions, our words, our silence, our fears, all bear witness to the difficulty of making it so. Let us empty ourselves of all which burdens us and welcome the one who lives with us forever. Please join me as we pray. Steadfast God, we confess that we busy ourselves building walls between us and others, while you would have us embrace everyone as your beloved. We run to welcome those who look, talk, and act like us, bypassing the very ones you have given us to love. Forgive us, faithful heart. By your grace, help us to see the beloved community you are building for all people, one with no privilege for whiteness or wealth, no wages required in order to eat or access care, no documentation required to gather at the table and be fed by your grace. Teach us to be neighbors. Amen. By God's desire, we are invited to start again, finding joy in God's expansive household of hope and peace. God's covenant with us is everlasting. God's steadfast love is forever. God's forgiveness makes us new and whole. Thanks be to God. Amen. And in the name of Christ, our Prince of Peace and example of hope, I invite you to turn and greet one another this morning and pass the peace of Christ.
Today's scripture reading is from Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 1 through 6. Woe to the shepherds who are destroying and scattering the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord, God of Israel, says to the shepherds who tend my people. Because you have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not bestowed care on them, I will bestow punishment on you for the evil you have done, declares the Lord. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them and will bring them back to their pasture, where they will be fruitful and increase in number. I will place shepherds over them who will tend them, and they will no longer be afraid or terrified, nor will any be missing declares the Lord. The days are coming, declares the Lord. Then I will praise up for David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord our righteous Savior. The word of God for the people of God. This summer, as many of you likely already know, the world will be captivated by a series of sporting events that will test the limits of skill, dedication, and teamwork. It's a gathering of the finest competitors from around the globe, each striving for excellence and the glory of a well-earned victory. These elite athletes from every corner of the world the best of the best come together to showcase incredible talents that they have honed over many years. There will be moments of success as well as heartbreaking disappointment. And for those of us watching, these competitors embody the very spirit of human perseverance and grace under pressure. Yes, friends, I'm talking about none other than the International Sheepdog Trials. Held this August in County Donegal, Ireland, where my wife's mother, Emma, Pastor Emma's family, is from for three exhilarating days of nonstop action. If you haven't already discovered this tiny corner of the internet that posts mesmerizing videos of sheep and sheepdogs and their shepherds herding their flock, I highly recommend that immediately after service, you get on YouTube and do a quick search. You will not be disappointed. And I was reminded of this glorious event a few weeks ago when Emma and I were driving across Scotland from St. Andrews on the East Coast to the Isle of Skye on the West. And we happened to spot a sheepdog and his shepherd, who was a four-wheeler, trying to corral a ewe and her lamb in through a gate in a field to join the rest of the flock. Have you seen the movie Babe? About a pig in Scotland? Well, imagine the classic sheepdog. This is what we saw. Black and white, gorgeous border collie. Gorgeous field. And the sheep are the cute ones, not the scary ones that make you, you know, wonder if demonic possession is a real thing, but the really cute ones with the white face is just gorgeous. And we happened to be in standstill traffic at the time, so we spent a good 15 minutes glued watching this coordinated effort between the shepherd and his trusty black and white collie trying to convince these woolly rebels what was best for them. We rolled down our windows and caught the sound of a few sharp melodic whistles that the dog reacted immediately to. But it didn't seem to matter. The sheep were intent on doing their own thing, resisting all efforts to gather them in, and to be honest, eventually the shepherd and sheepdog just moved on, figuring that the ewe and lamb would figure it out for themselves. Our passage today invokes this pastoral image of a shepherd and their flock, and as a dog person, I like to imagine a four-legged friend as well. And in fact, I'd invite you for a moment to take in your gorgeous stained glass window, which I was admiring, which depicts this for us. Jesus as shepherd, carrying the lamb, and unlike the sheep we witnessed in Scotland, they are following along <laughs> nicely. Our prophet today, Jeremiah, offers us this image to communicate the kind of human leadership God 
and address the immediate concern 
whole sections of society, neglecting the root causes of poverty and marginalization. Yet as we engage with these various levels of leadership, particularly in an election year like this, it is crucial to reflect on our own roles within these dynamics, whether in our professional, our personal, or community lives, we, all of us, are leaders in some capacity. Our actions and decisions contribute to the broader well-being of society. And the call to be a shepherd leader, one who desires the flourishing of all, who seeks to alleviate suffering and elevate dignity for all, to coordinate and relate to all others in meaningful and respectful ways, attentive to the felt needs and concrete problems others are facing, this call to shepherd leadership in the book of Jeremiah remains as true and as challenging today as it did then. And it applies to you and me as much as kings and priests. Perhaps Jeremiah is offering us a blessing. May you seek flourishing for all. May you seek flourishing for all. Friends, hear this blessing. May you seek flourishing of all. May you seek flourishing of all, and may you do it in community with others. Get connected with other congregations, with the community around you, with those experiencing homelessness who come here on the morning knowing that they can be fed and have a safe place to sit and encounter a community of God. May you seek the flourishing of all, and may you seek to find organizations and efforts through which you can serve and expand your service in whatever capacity you can. May you seek the flourishing of all and do so by engaging, not disengaging, with the political process, and I know that is difficult. Advocate with your voice and your presence. May you seek the flourishing of all, and may you understand the power and responsibility that you have as a shepherd leader for those who are routinely stripped of their power and neglected by society. May you seek the flourishing of all, and may you never tire or yield to despair, for God is with you and seeks the flourishing of all alongside you. Amen.
to remember Deb and her family this morning, to remember those on our prayer list, and any unspoken, maybe even unadmitted to yourself, need. All can be brought before God, and God knows it before you utter it. But there is power in speaking things aloud. And so knowing that that power comes from God, I invite you to pray with me, and as each petition ends, God of hope, please respond, receive our prayer. Wanting to serve God and trust in God, we bring our needs and longings, saying, God of hope, receive our prayer. We seek blessing for those who bring health where there is sickness, those who seek to bring wisdom where there is ignorance, those who seek to bring beauty where none is perceived. We pray to you, God of hope, receive our prayer. We seek blessings for Woodside Church and all places of worship in our community as we seek ways to spread your love. We pray to you, God of hope, receive our prayer. We seek blessings for our world and its leaders for all who work for justice and peace. We pray to you, God of hope, receive our prayer. We seek blessings for those who are struggling with health issues, physical and mental, and those direction in their lives, those we hold in our hearts, and those whose names we now speak. We pray to you, God of hope, receive our prayer. God of mercy, receive these prayers we offer and bless us that we may be a blessing to others. And we offer these prayers in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
table. We would come not as strangers, but those who are called into God's family of steadfast love and faithfulness. You, God, have poured out the spirit of strength upon the bread which is broken for us, so we might go to tear down all the walls that divide us, to build bridges of reconciliation with all with whom we are broken. You pour the grace of the Spirit into the cup which is passed to us, so that we might recognize those who are our siblings, not outsiders we need to fear. As we feast on this meal of remembrance, as we join hands and hearts with those around us, may we recognize that we are woven together with the scarlet threads of steadfast love and faithfulness. Please join me in the communion prayer. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. Through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life Christ gives. Come, for all is ready.
May we seek to include all in the precious flock of Christ, and may you go today to shine God's hope and message of inclusion and belonging to the world.